What's up, former party people? This is Jerry, you know, the one who actually combs his hair on the A is for Alcoholic podcast. Now, if you're finding value in listening to the AIFA podcast every week and you want to support sharing it with others, we invite you to become a sustaining monthly or per show contributor. Go to patreon.com backslash AIFA. It's super easy and it only takes a quick moment. It's about as easy as buying one of those pre-cooked space chickens from the grocery store, taking it outside, giving it a big old kiss, and kicking it into traffic. (laughs) Why would you do that? Anyway, you do you, and I'll do me. Again, go to patreon.com backslash AIFA. And with that, people, let's start the show. A is for Alcoholic is a program about recovery. My name is John, and I'm an alcoholic. And my name is Jerry, and I'm an alcoholic. Join us as we go through the alphabet of alcoholism one letter at a time. So Jerry and I were just talking about um, weight loss, weight gain, um, fitness, our vanity, our bullshit egos. Getting the best of us. Um, it's like slowly turning into a weight loss <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Welcome to A's for Alcoholic. There's there's many facets yeah. to recovery, and we like to you know, we like to reach out and talk about all of them. I think all of them. But I yeah. just welcome to C is for calorie counting. Yeah, exactly. V yeah. vanity, I think, is also a, a, it was a big one. You know, because it's like, am I getting too fat? And it's like, no, man, you're fine, John. You've been too fat. Right. You've been way too right. fat. You are not that way now. Um, well, and then Megan will be like, dude, you, you're great. And I'm like, well, you just say I'm great because you're married to me. Like, you bought this property. Like, you have to be like, yeah, the house has some problems, but it's fucking great. Of course. <laughs> Everybody else driving by is like, oh, shit. Uh, you know, it's uh, are they infested with bats? Yeah, what you is know? that? Like, they need a fumigate? Yeah. Is the basement yeah, leaking? Exactly. What's going on? Yeah. Is it flooded in there? Is that whole wing of the house made out of chicken <laughs> wire and pallets? You right. know, like, yeah. <clears throat> um. So, you know, it's just it's important that we check our vanity and when we can and so it's good to feel good about yourself, right? I mean, it's important. Absolutely. To feel- I think that's a really important part of recovery. I think that's one of the uh, you know, the fucking I've the joy. Is that what we're yeah, doing? Yeah, we're today? doing but, J J but for joy. It's said something else like the you had used the word earlier when we were talking like the promises or the the best part, the the benefits of recovery. Yeah. Yeah. And um the benefits of recovery, joy. And um, real quick, before we get in there, I just want to tell you about our sponsor today Mm -hmm. and always is the Green Camel Press. Um, I was very excited. I just, um, I received a check for some cards that I sold to a little little home goods kind of store. And um, it wasn't much. But um, it was <laughs> oh it was cool they were they were really nice I went in there and I said hey remember me from last year and they mm-hmm. bought some cards and um, so there are greeting cards available at greencamelpress.com there's uh, I do have some t-shirts left Jerry if you know anybody who wants a comfy green fucking minty green t-shirt with our logo on it I'll put the word out <laughs> <laughs> so yeah go check out what we do at greencamelpress.com they're always happy mm-hmm. to uh, help sponsor this this podcast as well and there's a couple other podcasts I want to tell you about one that um, Jerry and I's friend Walter where he basically just robbles about weird stuff that he doesn't approve of um, yeah. called gluten is not your problem I told him I like to put a little stevie in my coffee and he lost his mind this oh, last yeah? episode, he's like, why can't you just have sugar? You're fine, John. And I was like, I don't want the calories. Stevie is a natural extract. You yeah, know, it tastes like, good. It's like sweeter than sugar, actually. Mm-hmm. So, boom. And he's like, ah, you don't need that shit aspartame. I was like, it's not aspartame. It's stevia. It's like a plant. So, And then I got an email from a listener who was like, John, you go ahead and add whatever stevia. Stevia is a natural extract, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And she was she wrote me this email about it. And I was like, yes, vindicate nice. it. You're like, fuck you, Walter. <laughs> Basically. Well, I didn't say as much because I, I kind of, it's funny because I'll bring these things up. He gets really angry and mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I, I find it entertaining. You so, should just change it to Walter is not your problem. 
<laughs> Walter. With Walter. Walter. No, that's Walter. how he is, though. It's his, his jam. That's like his shtick. Right. It's that's just, his thing, yeah. It's his, it's his thing. So, um, Gluten is Not Your Problem. I also uh, co-host one with my girlfriend, Rashida, called Rashida and John, and we talk about more about health and fitness and relationships. Mm. And Where does um, she weigh in on the stevia? She's not. She doesn't do any kind of sugar. So she's like. She doesn't do any sweeteners so at all. So she is huh? like. She is what she calls uh, sugar sober. She doesn't do it at all. Right. So mm-hmm. she'll, she'll have things like dates or um, I think on occasion she'll use not even any more. I think she's off like the coconut nectars and stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. So it's all this stuff. But she's like super not into it. She gets she'll get pears. Hey, Coco. <laughs> yeah, I know. Welcome to Coco. A is for Coco. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> So she's uh, she's pretty much sugar sober uh, at mm-hmm. this point outside of. She... I wonder if like her using sweeteners in her mind is like drinking NA beer for guys like us, you know. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If you're out there drinking NA beer, if it works for you. Yeah, like, okay, I just you know, I, w- but... I wouldn't I wouldn't feel inclined to drink an NA beer and. Nah, nah. I don't think she. I think she's kind of lost a taste for it. And also, good for her. She told me that, um, and this was kind of an interesting thing. And, and I know that you know we talk about food sometimes, but she's like, I had a bite of something that had sugar in it, and I felt mm-hmm. my body get really excited. And she's like, yeah, that's when well, I know it's an addictive fucking yeah. chemical. Yeah. And she was like, that's when I know that I had a problem. Is like, I can't, I just can't do that. You know. So that's kind of her thing. Is yeah. she? Uh, she knows she, she can feel when like kind of like if you were to take a drink and you'd be like all fired up and like oh this doesn't yeah. mm-hmm. this feels really really great and this is the fucking worst thing in the world i can't have this so yeah, yeah. um so yeah go check those out j yeah. is j is for joy j is for jerry j is for john j oh wow yeah yeah i you know in case we run out of j words we can just I don't know. Jay's for Jurassic Five. <laughs> Jurassic Park. They're dope. Have you been watching that? Um, have you watched that Evolution of Hip Hop documentary on Netflix? Uh uh-uh. uh Is it good? I highly recommend it. It's, it's like second or third season. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. Uh, Megan will sit. With, I'll draw and like put it on and listen to it. And Megan sat with me a few times, and I've just been like, "That's my shit right there," you know. And like, "Oh shit, they're gonna talk about so and so," and then they'll talk about so and so, and be like, "I told you, that dude's fucking dope, Megan." And she's just like, "Okay, Jerry." It's a series. It's like a TV series. Yeah, it's a series. It's a documentary. Okay. Yeah, it's a a documentary Mm -hmm. on Netflix. If you have a Netflix, it's Mm -hmm. great. Nothing to do with recovery. It's just all to do with fucking the evolution of hip hop, and I love hip hop. Um, love it. What do you think? So. I, I want to talk a little that bit about hip hop now because you bring it up. It brings me joy. It brings you joy. <clears throat> and right. we always talk about like, man, 90s hip, everybody always says this, 90s hip hop was the shit. That's where it culminated. That was its apex, man. Like, It's like the golden it's era. It's the golden yeah. era, right? <laughs> and somebody was telling me, they were making this comment about everyone's trying to sound like they're like from the 90s and nobody, like I want to hear some shit that sounds like it's from the future. And they mentioned this one, I think it's called Clippings is the name of the group and it's the guy Mm -hmm. gosh uh, his name is david something and he was in that movie blind spotting did you Mm -hmm. see that movie Mm -hmm. jerry you got my girlfriend's in that movie you gotta see you gotta you gotta check out blind spotting okay um I'm making a note of my phone. I'm not, a note. Just not listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, he's got some very interesting uh, hip hop. I think it's called Clippings, and it was very different and weird. And may, you, you may not like it, but I just thought it was unique. It didn't sound like anything else I'd I heard. I think there's some newer futuristic shit though. There's yeah. Death Grips is pretty good. That was the other one that 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 this yeah. guy was talking about. Hip hop and from Run the, the future. Jewels is yes. doesn't sound like '90s hip hop to me at all. Run no. the Jewels sounds like they're taking some elements of trap and put, making fucking great music. But I just feel nostalgic, dude. All my listening on all my if you listen to all my playlists on Spotify, it's all like '90s hip hop and '80s new wave mm-hmm. and like '80s punk rock. You know, like it's just. I'm hitting that age where I discover new things and like it, but I just feel comfortable listening to XTC, you know, or like fucking, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like Elvis Costello. I, I do. don't even listen to, like, I don't even really fuck with, like, They Might Be Giants anymore, really. No. Much. And I used to love them, but now I'm like, eh. 
I just, Absolutely. I feel like, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I guess for me, it's been more of like, what is the vibe that I want in my house or in the car? So I've often, right. I'm either listening to classical music, which I know sounds a little pretentious, but it's true. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I know, I know it sounds pretentious. It's it does. All right. It's all right. Uh, or like my friend Nabil says, he's like, man, it's like the only good thing white people have ever done is cl- classical, classical music. music. Yeah, it's great for being productive. Yeah, it is. If you're being productive, making mm-hmm. something or creating or making dinner or cleaning, yeah, that shit will help. Um, and or like the, I always like the lo-fi hip hop business. Yeah, that's be that's, familiar. Well, that's with young that. people shit too. Yeah, I find this. Uh, we listen to it at the tattoo mm-hmm. shop. Our younger counter guy who's like, I think one of the older millennials or younger millennials. I don't know. He's a millennial guy, but he plays it all the time. Okay. I like it. It's it's, it's so nondescript. There's like, I've, I've, I'm never like, yo, that's my jam right there by DJ fucking Milk and Crackers or whatever. I'm just like, yeah, this is happening. It's cool. It's <laughs> DJ Milk and Crackers? Yeah, DJ Milky, Milky Crackers. Mm, DJ Milky Crackers. That's, yeah. With the crispy sound. Hot fire. Um, okay. Finding joy in early recovery, Jerry. Is it early recovery or just recovery in well, general? Well, I mean, I guess we could just say recovery in all general. Of all of it. Because um, I didn't have much joy in early recovery, no, John, to be honest with no, you. No, I, d- yeah. I didn't either. Um, but I think it's important to, to remind myself, even today, even four years on, like that, that things are good because... Like I'll get caught in my head in very, mm-hmm. very negative loops. Um, I Fuck was, yeah. I was, I went, I went on a run this afternoon because I wasn't gonna go in the morning because I was still feeling like my ankle was still bothering me, and it's like mm-hmm. now it's like I get fucking itchy when I don't go for a run, kind of like how I used to drink. Like I'm swapping these yeah. these habits out. And so I finally was like, no, I feel okay. I'll just go for a light one. And I started getting caught up in this negative thinking of, um, of all the problems I have, right? Instead mm-hmm. of, um, instead of like all the things I have to be grateful for. And I was like, I don't want to fucking be grateful, and I don't want to be thankful, man. And like, if I'm supposed to be grateful for this shit, then the world is fucked. And if the world's not fair, then what about the people who don't even have what I have? Like, everything is nice. fucked. And like, so. And you're doing this while you're running? <laughs> yes, I was having. Oh my god, that's like the worst run ever. I know. So that's like the first mile until you like get the get the gunk out, you know? Right. Um, but. When I came home and I felt better afterwards and, um, you know, I got a very, a very small, but I still got a check in the mail, which is awesome, you know, right. for something that for I had done them cards. for selling yeah. them greeting cards. And, um, so like, I was like, okay, so settle down, go buy some groceries, fill up the fridge, um, get yourself cleaned up and, you know, you've got work to do. We've got, you know, we were, you know, we we're recording this podcast and I've got other stuff going on and um you know like I'm starting a new job this week and so that's something that I want to be prepared for whether or not I want mm-hmm. the job I mean I do want the job or else I wouldn't have gone out and gotten it but so finding the little joy and I yeah I also don't want to like I really enjoy running and I don't want to like ruin it by getting all this negative shitty uh thinking you right. know and yeah. that is, um, I think that's something that sometimes like I just have to get it out of my system in the beginning because it really starts to open up after a while and finding that thing that I, you know, running that I really like <clears throat> does bring me joy as much as it might bring me pain in my legs or something like that. Yeah. So um, yeah. how do you describe, you know, we talked about the, uh, in one of our, our movie review uh that we that we recorded um don't worry he won't get far on foot that you can you can subscribe to patreon and listen to right now yeah um, give us some money <laughs> jack so um but he talks about the guy talks about celebrating mediocrity or what was the the quote? yeah today i celebrate mediocrity and i've heard you say things like um 
I just want it to be like even keel. I'm just looking to be content, right? Yeah, it's my favorite term in my recovery. Is to be content. So Contentment, yeah. But do you have moments of joy in your day, in your week, in your month? I mean, Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I get rewarded with a lot of that, especially uh, lifting up that veil of alcohol and lifting up that veil of active alcoholism, even just uh, that, 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 that negative feedback loop. You know, mm-hmm. getting out of that yeah absolutely i do and they're all in little things i mean i can't expect i think going into recovery expecting it to be completely joyous 100 percent of the time and being this big bright fire that always burns with happiness and everything mm-hmm. i think that's approaching it like an alcoholic naturally would you want the biggest hardest bang for your buck you know what i'm saying so you go into it looking for like the brightest fucking fire you know and i think it's unrealistic um I don't think it's wrong because I think a lot of people want that, you know? Yeah. But I, I just think it's it's like being like, yeah, as soon as I fucking get sober and recover, I'm going to fly, you know, like physically fly, not in a plane, like just flap my <laughs> wings, my arms or whatever. I just, I, I think it's, it's just something that is unattainable. So joy is a weird word for me, right? Because joy to me is like, when I picture it, I picture it being this giant, profound giant big giant thing like a firework you know and i'm not really looking i like fireworks i don't want them every fucking day though you know Mm -hmm. like every day doesn't have to be new year's eve you know i don't need that i wanted that when i was drunk and it didn't work so how the fuck am i gonna get it sober you know so for me it's always it's small moments of contentment and warmth even keel to me because it's not unrealistic and it's attainable and it's also comfortable Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah yeah so that's what i look for I think um, when I get when I get the when I'm lacking that and when I'm lacking that comfort that warmth, um, a lot of it has to do with me being lazy in my recovery. Yeah. Me being um, lazy in in what I need, so I can't. So then I if I if I don't if I don't work on the things that I need for each day, whether that be the journaling that I do or. <clears throat> Even prayer, um, which is another <clears throat> funny thing that I have done my best to get next to, uh, <laughs> yeah. then I then I don't even have a baseline for contentment, and so that I can't even go and find joy. That I can't go and like run like eight miles and find this like you know when I find this awesome stride and I'm like yes this is what I want. Or when I complete a project and I like really feel proud of that project. You know when you uh, or when I, when I get really excited about something, you know, and, and like you said, joy doesn't have to be explosive. Joy no. can be, um, like my girlfriend and I, we, we got to hang out and we, she was, she was doing her thing and I was doing my thing and we met up at her house and I like prepped the food that she was going to cook and we cooked dinner together and we sat mm-hmm. and we just kind of like watched, we watched Scandal and do you know this show? No. Uh, anyhow, Kerry Washington, uh, it's like uh, high-powered political scandals. And anyhow, it's it's totally ridiculous and soap opery, but it's it's fun. And she's seen it all, and I haven't. And we just sat there, and we watched some TV, and we ate some good food. And, like, I really – we had a really nice night. And then that was it, and that was, that was the extent of it, you know? And, like, mm-hmm. that was something that I found – joy and comfort in um you know i i think that like what are what are some of the joys that i want that i don't have is you know i would i think the thing i would i would say the things that i'm working on like if i want any of the the art projects that i'm working on that i want validation for right or i want i want the world to appreciate what i do and even if that's you know this podcast and we get 160 downloads and i'm like 160 that's awesome like that doesn't god damn i haven't yeah i haven't you know i i don't get bored of that you know i'm not like oh gee man we've only got 160 we need we need 160,000. you know nah, um yeah but it's but i don't really like that still get i get excited or when i was telling you before we had somebody listening on the other side of the world it was either in like chiang mai or fucking australia or something like 
that's really cool. Like that's, and what it comes back to is these things that I do is um, some kind of service, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about service? Not bad. No, no. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm totally, I'm grokking oh. what you're saying. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yeah, it is. It's <clears throat> definitely service there. So, yeah, it's not like, oh, I'm working on these art projects and I just want, I do want the world, I want to be able to express myself the way that I that I see things and I want people to appreciate them. I want people to um, like them. I want, you know, ultimately I need to find validation within myself and not worry about what other people think, but I'm still human. <laughs> so yeah. it, I would, of course, en- yeah. I would enjoy overwhelming success, but I'm also not expecting that today, <clears throat> you know? Mm-hmm. So then joy becomes these little things like, well, what steps did you take to get there? If that's your goal, overwhelming success, then what little things did I do? And it's like, okay, well, I worked on this and I spent an hour like writing about all the different stuff that I'm trying to do and working on the things that I'm working on. And, um, and, and hopefully that that will bring me a little bit of joy so that I may, um, move on to the next day, move on to tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know that I get I don't remember the last time I had anything super explosive or exciting or, you know. Yeah, I don't either, dude. Um, honestly. Which, I mean, I don't mean to come to the to the table unprepared <laughs> to talk about this. But mm-hmm. I, I think that that's I think that's fine. And I think that's life. Right. And so um, building it so that when it does come or being prepared for it and being ready for it, you know, like when you get. I don't know. You know, we, we're we've been working on this book for two years now, and um, you know, I I am I'm really excited about putting something together with you that 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 will that I can be proud of, and that hopefully somebody can find helpful, useful, and and I think to me that 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 puts a level of I would put that in the joy level because yeah yeah absolutely it's not bliss it, joy joy is such a strong word huh. Sure. I mean, it can be. I mean, but can can joy can it just be from like I don't I don't want to sound corny, but nah, corn it up, dude. Can you just can you can I can I go outside in my front yard and like can I can I find joy in picking some fresh tomatoes off the fucking vine and bringing them in and fuck yeah, putting them drunk John drunk John wouldn't even have had tomatoes (laughs) exactly. You wouldn't even had a yard. You would have had that fucking horrible little apartment in Napa that that same one one folding chair you know yeah it was a it was that weird couch that you had to break into two pieces because mm-hmm. it couldn't fit in your living room <laughs> there's been no tomato plant so no. it's like yeah i i see what you mean it's more like gratitude is in it too you know like those little pieces i mean when you get mm-hmm. to i don't know i'm sure with your kid there's stuff you know getting to watch yeah, her yeah. grow up and you were talking yeah, about how she's doing trip. she's doing all these these little art projects that it's like mm-hmm. you know to see her do that kind of stuff like, yeah, she's got like a little YouTube channel now where she makes little cartoons or their art projects. I mean, they're, they're you know, they're as good as a nine year old can make them. They're, but they're pretty good, you know, like, you know, and so that, it's, it's watching her as a milestone and a marker for my own life. Do you know what I mean? And then seeing the things in her that come from me and that come from her mom is really fascinating. And it makes me, yeah, really feel fulfilled. Like, I'm like, okay, you're not fucking this up too bad. I mean, maybe we're still doing this podcast when she's 16 and she's like, yo, dad, eat a dick. And I'm just like, oh, I fucked it all up. I, mean, I hope that doesn't happen, but, you know, who knows, you know? I can't tell you either way, but those those things bring me joy. You know, the family ones are pretty, they're pretty obvious, you know? I've recovered a lot with my family life so far, you know? It well, was can pretty you, bad, you know? Can you, can you expand upon that just a little? I mean, it may not be obvious to some people. I don't know. I'm just wondering, like, what was what was it like before and what what little things do you and your wife share that you didn't share when you were drinking and wouldn't be sharing you know i mean is there right so well what it was before is they were like a fucking chore Mm -hmm. you know there was something i had to do you know like i got my wife i got drunk and got my wife pregnant on our wedding night and i had no intention of having children right so like this this point i was like i have now been 
uh, weighed down with a responsibility. You know, um, like this, I have to keep this person alive, and on top of it, I gotta <clears throat> not fuck this person up too. Oh, great! Like I'm totally gonna fuck this person up, you know, because that's that's just what I do. I'm a I'm fucking worthless, you know. I'm a drunk. I can't do this shit, you know. And so the difference now is, and, and with my wife, it was. I mean, our whole relationship was was rough you know like there's a lot of insecurity on my part because i was i was literally crazy like my brain was literally fucking crazy so i was incredibly insecure and i would always i'm always like why do i go from a one to a ten all the time i can never you know what i mean like i just go from like completely fine to like fucking furious in seconds and you know that was because i felt like shit all the time because yeah. my body was full of poison and my brain was full of poison it was full of stinking thinking <laughs> john mm -hmm. but nowadays it's like this this thing we share now is this ability to communicate so even when things are difficult or frustrating i can talk to her and be fucking honest with her like yo i was mad because you were cramping my shit like i wanted to play fucking conan exiles all day and you fucking are making me do stuff. And now I don't want to do those things, but I'm going to do them because I owe you that. And like, I love you and I want to help you out, you know? But at the same point, like, yo, dude, I got to fucking get shaped wood to build a fucking furnace for my Conan character. Like, what the fuck, you know? Same with Olive, you know? I'm like, I've asked you multiple times to do this. You're not listening to me. And the only reason I'm asking you to do this is because you need to shower. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't shower, you're going to fucking, you know, if you're going to have bad hygiene, that's going to fuck your life up in the long run. You know? <laughs> yes, this These is are like little things that are simple that I could, I could not. Megan did all that shit. I couldn't accomplish any of that because, you know, I was falling down drunk. You know, there was no fucking. That was it. The volada. That's all I get. You know, just quick. It was all gone out the door. Mm -hmm. But it's those those moments. I think. In early recovery, the joys, the tiny joys I had were like just waking up and not feeling like a like a ton of shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, filled with fucking yeah. roofy nails, you know. Um, waking up and realizing that I didn't have to make that many apologies or any, really. No immediate apologies. You know, I had the big mm -hmm. apologies to work on, but I didn't have to wake up and be like, I'm sorry. Waking up with money, you know, or waking up with like accomplishment like i made it one more fucking day you know i made it yeah. one more day those are those little joys those little accomplishments was a better word than joy because those accomplishments brought me <clears throat> happiness they brought me fulfillment but yeah it wasn't like the hills are alive with the sound of music you know and it, like it was like the opposite of that but i noticed when we, you were talking earlier about going on your run i think we we follow this path of least resistance and i think our brain does that it wants to always follow that neural pathway and that's that path of least resistance and i think as alcoholics we want to do it even quicker you know what mm -hmm. i mean we want to follow that straight path to where we need to get to and i feel like that pity party that negativity all of that that feedback loop of looping back in why me why me poor me what the fuck I, all my plans are ruined i really do feel like a lot of that has to do with ego and alcoholism you know i think a lot of non-alcoholics do it too but i think you know in cases of guys like you and i we just fall into that path of least resistance because it's the easiest way to get from point a to point b you know and point b should be like hey i'm doing all right it's all right it'll all work itself out instead of oh, i'm a fucking moron and you know i should run into traffic you know like yeah you you mentioned like you talk about <clears throat> Our, you know, my brain and, you know, my... Yeah. My... And sorry for speaking for your brain. I don't know how no, your no. brain works. I know how my brain works. No, yeah. but you 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 make a good point about my brain wanting to go and, and our brains as, as alcoholics wanting to go to the path of least resistance, right? Right, and, right. Um, you know, whatever you call it, whether it's joy or happiness or whatever, we're just we just yeah. happen to be on the letter J. So joy works for us. I know, us, I'm but... focusing way too much on it. I just need to... yeah. Find um, joy and letting it go. Here's how. Here's how I would. Um, I would. I would talk about it when I'm running. Right. So my body. Uh -huh. My body hurts, and my body goes, "Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that." And then it finally gets over it, and it's like, "Okay, this is what we're doing, so we'll readjust." My brain right. is constantly, and not constantly, but oftentimes, like, "No, man." You know, we should just stop this. We should rest. We should relax. We should just go. We don't. We don't need to do this, man. You know. You know what we need to do? Oh, well, you don't drink anymore, which is too bad because it'd be really cool if you did. You know that part of my yeah, brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but we should go get something fucking really fatty and, and and tasty to eat, and we should. You know, we should just sit on the couch and we should do this. And so, like, 
So there's all these things that are battling and like the idea of joy or real happiness, like if there's my mind and there's my body, like there's some other thing, spirit or soul or whatever that I think is, is where my uh, joy or happiness fulfillment kind of resides in that third entity inside me that is not my brain which is just neuropathways and is not my body which is just muscles and blood and bones you know and so it's trying to find that thing that that thing or that activity or that 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 moment or that that feeling that really fulfills that purpose right purpose so yeah And maybe that's what I'm getting at here is that finding that I find the joy in the purpose you know yesterday I was kind of, um, I felt a little bit listless. I got up and I was, again, I was feeling sore. So I was like, I'm not going to go for a run, but I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to dress for the run. So I had on my like running shoes and all this stuff, because if I'm dressed that way, I'm more apt to do it. So Mm -hmm. I went to, um, I went to a meeting and it was great. Uh, and it was really good. And afterwards I drove up North and I was going to go to this like, um, emergency preparedness fair basically because you know we deal with forest fires here and oh um, yeah you got evacuated one yes year. I, I did that. I got a yeah. yeah I got actually like, technically I yeah I got evacuated one one year um and so I got there late and so I didn't get the free backpack that everybody did and I was like that's fine oh, I fuck. got I got some pamphlets and I learned some stuff and that was cool and <clears throat> and um I was like well I'll go for while I'm up here I might as well go find a hike because my my ankle was hurting and and I went for this hike and I still wasn't feeling all that great. And I just had this sort of like listlessness of yesterday and I didn't know what to do with myself. And I didn't feel like I accomplished anything that I that I wanted to do. And I ended up eating like some weird bowl of noodles at some place on the side of the highway. And it was just a very strange <laughs> fucking day, right? But I was by yeah. myself and it was like, there wasn't a lot of purpose and there was nothing bad about yesterday. I went to a meeting. I went to a hike. I got something. I got a bowl of noodles that were not half bad. Um, they could yeah. use a little more seasoning. You know, I went to this thing that I wanted to go to. I um, <clears throat> I came home and um, what did I do last night? I don't know. Watch some TV and ate some, I don't know, grapes or whatever it was. But my point yeah. is like there was nothing bad about yesterday, but it just didn't fulfill me. So... That to me is that joy that I'm looking for comes with purpose and comes with that's where the fulfillment comes in. So I think in the future, I need to set better intentions about what my purpose for that day is so that I can better uh, find that enjoyment, find that Mm -hmm. fulfillment, maybe to better quantify it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you not, you're just not good with free days? You're like, oh man, this fucking free day. I got to do something. I got to do something with this fucking free day. I guess. I mean, I think too, because I have, I, I, and I maybe I've talked about this with the podcasts and other things and all the stuff that I work on. Um, I often feel like the internet is my boss. Yeah. You know, where it's like, uh, and maybe you do to a certain extent where you're like, I got to post this shit on my Instagram or maybe I wish yeah. I didn't, I didn't have to, but you know, people people like it right people like coming to your instagram and seeing your artwork and right and it's also my <laughs> portfolio so it's right. like hey look i'm i can do this there's so many of us out here doing this that i can do this mm-hmm. as well and yeah. there's your bittersweet relationship with tattooing. social media i fucking hate it <laughs> but um hate it but yeah I just be open about how much i hate it from now just every post is just like what the fuck are you here for what are you here for yeah just watch my followers just go down. <laughs> might be better. Do you, so I think that that's... Um, that brings me no joy. No joy. So, but <laughs> no, but I just finding finding purpose in my day. And so, but you're right. I wasn't very good with a free day. Like there, But again, there was on the surface, there was nothing wrong with yesterday. And in fact, it was no. a free day mm-hmm. and I did good things and I had an, I had a good time, supposedly. It was just this level of like purposelessness. Right, like maybe you felt like, well, you probably felt like you could have accomplished more. And so you had, Mm -hmm. maybe you had like a set number of things internally, like mentally, there's a set number of things I need to do today. And I didn't do them, even though they weren't on my list. I should Mm -hmm. have done more with this day. I should have squeezed every drop out of it. Right. (laughs) Which is not a bad attitude to have. I mean, it's very productive, you know, but you also have to be a little forgiving, 
I think with yourself when you can't squeeze every drop out of it because you're only human. You're only human, buddy. Yeah. You know, you can only do so much, you know, like, yeah. So like, I love free days. I uh-huh. fucking, I wish every day was, yeah, man. Cause I'm Conan exiling it all day or playing like fallout 76 or something. I'm doing laundry or something in the meantime, but you know what I mean? Like I like, I really love being listless, man. Like I'm a lazy fucking person sometimes. <laughs> like I just, I mean, that's why I do art. That's why I draw. Cause I can just sit down. <laughs> that's, <laughs> you that's know what, what I'm it saying? is. Like, yeah. I guess. I don't know. But, uh, huh. I mean, yeah. I almost bought a video game the other day. I was in, in my list list. Um, I was wandering around and my, one of the things that I, I struggle with sometimes is, um, and I don't overspend, but I'll go out and I'm like, why do I think I need to fucking get something, buy something to feel better? But I do. Yeah. So I think I was looking for like running shoes or something like that. Like I want to, because that's somehow that's like a thing where, if I buy running shoes, it's for a good purpose, so it's okay to right. spend. Right, mine is groceries. <clears throat> I get it. Right, <laughs> but I I don't even mean that sarcastically. Like I'll buy extra shit that I know I don't need because I'm like it's groceries, so you can spend a little bit of money on this. Right. You know? mm-hmm. So I didn't buy anything yesterday, uh, but I went into Best Buy. I don't know why, because it was next to the Sports Emporium or whatever it was called, and um. I was I almost bought Red Dead Redemption too, but I didn't want to spend forty bucks because I gotta like that's that's a lot of listless hours I gotta I gotta put in for that that one. How many hours? It re- it requires a lot, at least a hundred. <laughs> so I'm well. I guess it depends on how you're playing it, but yeah. So even those things I know with our generation too, we're kind of the we're the f- first ones kind of with video games in our lives in that manner, but we're also were raised by boomers who told us like eh, you can't just be sitting on your ass playing games all day you got to go out and be productive and go out in the world and right ride your bike and shit you know and this younger generation after us man they just they figured out how to make money off of video games you know they've <clears throat> built whole economies around video games like actual video game economies where you can make money from selling items within the mm-hmm. fucking game you know so it's i but but then again it's also like it's just how you choose to spend your free time, I guess. You know mm-hmm. what? What does see? Video games got me, helped get me sober. Yeah, it did, man. Like if I didn't have that, my brother-in-law didn't have that PS4, and do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know if I would have stayed sober because I would have just gone back out again because I would go home every night and play like a game that had a whole story arc that I needed to finish. So I'm like, fuck this! I'm gonna go home and finish this story arc mm-hmm. you know like i have to finish this story and see how it ends you know and that was like i say all the time like grand theft auto and far cry far cry 3 got me sober you know and i wouldn't judge you for and it. last of us no yeah not I at don't all i think you would because you already know well you know i was playing games when we were drinking yeah like, i just like to play games but and that brings me a little joy there's some fulfillment in there sure. you know i know a lot of people look at it and be like it's a waste of time and i'm like it absolutely is but i'm allowed to waste some time every once <clears> in a while i mean it's just the same as being a movie nut. Mm-hmm. You know, I love movies too, but you know, this is like a movie I get to do my own shit in. When you are know? you going to start your sober Twitch? <laughs> I don't know. Wouldn't that be funny? Like I'd have to find a Twitch name and shit, you know, it'd be like squirrely J's mm-hmm. fucking attic, attic fight, sober Twitch. And I'm like, just reading out of the daily meditation for men. <laughs> while I'm fucking playing call of duty. I'm not even played any of those. Yeah, it's not even that. I'm like building things. It's yeah. just like me playing Minecraft. I told you, you should still the... have a Fallout fucking meeting in the basement of a church somewhere. Yeah, I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jerry, and I'm a day tripperaholic or whatever the drug is on Fallout. You know, I'm I'm addicted to Fury. I'm addicted to Fury. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, All the chems they give. You. I'm addicted to Medex and Stimpaks. <laughs> Stimpaks. That was the other one. Yeah, um, that's what it was. Yeah. But no, man, I mean, I wouldn't judge you. And especially if you're like, yeah, I, I I think that I need to learn to give myself a free day and put aside, right. you know, however many, you know, like, let me, I'll, because it, it sounds so stupid when I say it out loud that I don't want to say it out loud, but it's like, oh, I didn't work on that um, Instagram promo for the podcast today like I was right. supposed to. And I'm like in the grand scheme of the fucking universe in my own life, like is one Instagram promo. Should that ruin my day? Yeah. <laughs> just fold up the page. Fuck it. We're done. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Like we're done. Shouldn't yeah, I enjoy just, like, 
if you put the stools on the bar, I'll shut the lights off, right. dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, how stupid is that? I mean. Yeah. But these are ideas we give ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then these are ideas we also give ourselves within recovery. You know, it's just easy does it. I guess you just got to apply it to your life, too, you know. Like, easy does it. Everything will happen when it needs to happen. <clears throat> it's okay to. Yeah. It's okay every once in a while to not slack, but to just kind of focus on other things and if those other things are they call mental health days right and then you get clowned because you're like oh you're taking a mental health day you fucking crybaby millennial we're not even millennials Mm -hmm. but you know what i'm saying like it's like this concept of doing something to help yourself out you know yeah i think it's fucking horseshit when people talk shit on that kind of stuff because i'm like everybody needs an emotional mental break every once in a while not every day you know i'm not gonna be out by this pool eating fucking hot dogs being like mental health day every day forever but you know like take a break don't give yourself a panic attack i just picture you by the pool wild, dude. with like a pack of cold hot dogs just eating yeah, them just, out there I, just I, just, I, just with that <laughs> grease that hot dog grease you get in your mouth you ever eat a raw you have eaten raw i've hot eaten dogs. lots of raw hot dogs it makes your mouth like super greasy, greasy. oh it's kind awful. of gritty yeah mm, mm. Yeah. That was drunk Jerry though. Mm-hmm. Drunk Jerry did that shit all the time. Yeah, sober Jerry's like, I don't even really eat hot dogs anymore. I do, but not often. But there'd be a good fucking hot dog. You're absolutely right about the the like the day and and I do need to work on the easy does it and forgiving myself and saying, "Okay, you know what? Today you don't have any responsibilities and that's fine." Because right. all, all I did was was um all I did was ruin yesterday for myself by thinking that I was supposed to be doing something else. Right. And I could have really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I don't know, man. That noodle bowl, man. It was a good, it was a, it was a decent. Had some MSG in it. Well, it was, it was weird because I just typed in noodles near me on the maps app. That's weird. Yeah. (laughs) Is it? Such a weird term. (laughs) Not really. I guess maybe it's the alliteration that makes it sound like. noodles near me. Noodles near me, where they at? <laughs> I just, I should, I should start a place called Noodles Near Me, and then you should. Talk, I don't know, but it was just this weird place that looked like it used to be a McDonald's or something, or it was just very, but like it so was. You think it'd be good then? Yeah. It was clean. It was fresh. Everything. It was like nice and new. It wasn't usually. I get my noodles from some very, uh, you know, suspect places and little holes you in go the to wall. The dodgy. Yeah. Dodgy I, noodle shop. That's yeah. where you get some of the best noodles. I go to a lot of dodgy noodle shops, but mm-hmm. um, I was really surprised. The little avocado spring roll was the little fresh roll was nice. fucking delicious. Yeah. Oh my God. But um, I enjoyed so those. They, so they just didn't MSG you. No. You took too much. And then you were just like, my life sucks. Exactly. It's all up. You know, what the fuck? So I think, that's probably my problem with finding joy is that I'm always feeling like I'm not doing enough somewhere else. So right. how am I supposed to live in the moment when I think that I should be somewhere else in the moment all the time? You got to go back into the root of it, mm-hmm. right? You got to travel backwards and be like, why do I feel this way? What is my part in feeling this way? I think part of it is my value as a person, as a as a not a provider because i don't really i mean i provide for myself you're only providing for you yeah but i guess my worth is still my worth as a man too is maybe attached to some of that wow really maybe you think so well i mean here here i am this last year or two you know i had i had that job for six months until i couldn't fucking stand it anymore right and then you know i've got this i'm now in the process of working like three part-time jobs and you know being monetarily stable is also i think for me is a uh, um is something that i have to yeah i have as a, as a man i'm supposed to provide right or at least i'm supposed to be financially sound you know well, that's, nobody... what pa- that's what the patriarchy tells you right. <laughs> it's your gender role and it's toxic masculinity it's man. true i mean well no maybe. but i mean yeah but the idea of being know. a man having to provide but i i kind of dig where you are coming from yeah my like worth as a person well at least you feel like this is yeah because now you're cracking it open getting to the root of it and i'm like john you think it's wrong where you're just like hey man i'm just trying to fill it out and get to the root of it i don't it, know. You know yeah I don't, I don't know but you, you know what i've known about you you've always worked even drunk, you always fucking worked. <laughs> you may have shown up late. You may have shown up still drunk, but you always like. That's I've true. never known you to not have a job. <clears throat> That's true. You've always fucking worked, dude. Like there was a period of time in Seattle where I spent a, almost a whole year there and I didn't have a job. 
I would just go down to Eugene and bang out a couple of tattoos and then go right back up to Seattle again. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, you've always worked, right? And so I think now you're at this point where you may be feeling unsure because you don't have a steady gig. So you're like, well, I got to do something steady or I got to, you know. Mm-hmm. But then again, the steady gig or what you do is like kind of runs a little opposite of your lifestyle now. Do you know what I mean? Like there's nothing wrong with selling booze and being sober, but you know, it feels shitty to be around drunks and drunks like to sell booze. <laughs> mm-hmm. and drunks love to be around booze. Yeah, you know? it's true. Yeah. It's true. So you're like, hey, I could if I could work in a a bar where everybody in the bar was in recovery, we'd, you'd probably fucking kill it. You know what I mean? Like you guys, the whole bar would probably fucking kill it I, if they weren't just relapsing constantly. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, man, I just, I guess too, you know, and trying to transition into this and, you know, starting other businesses and whether it's. Right. <clears throat> mm-hmm doing all this stuff and feeling because well, you got the podcast yeah. and you got the green camel press now and you've got a handful of podcasts now you know? mm-hmm. so i think that yeah. there's there's that and wanting wanting success and and is not enough and so it's like if i if i take a day off from any of these things that all this work that i do that doesn't garner me a paycheck at the end of the week right. then i'm like oh i can't i don't i can't afford to have any time to myself and that's not really going to bring me any joy feeling that way about it and it's also right. it's also not going to bring any joy to when we sit here and talk about this stuff when we bring up <clears throat> you know the whole point of this the whole point of this podcast is certainly to help people but i'm yeah. i'm finding out more and more is that you and i sit here and sort through our issues and, right. and hopefully come up with some uh like oh yeah some epiphany or some you know yeah. what i mean like maybe that's why we only have like five listeners because mm-hmm. they're just like listening to these two 50 year old men mm-hmm. yeah except we're not 50. Well, 40 like two jokes yeah. in there yeah mm-hmm. but yeah it's just these people are like man i'm just listening to these two guys have group therapy every week i love it maybe <laughs> I, I i i don't know i'd be yeah. curious to, you know i and i i I think that's all. And I know part we have it. more than five listeners. Yeah, but yeah. But it's like, but that's that's part of why I enjoy doing the podcast is that it's like yeah, I get absolutely. something out of it because if it was, I'm not I'm not here to read from a script or to you know, you know right. lay down the lay down the rules for you or for me or for anybody else. I don't care. Right. Um. So all we do is talk about our experiences and it. us being at our at this certain part in our recovery in our lives. It's mm-hmm. like this is our experience right now. Yeah. 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 Whereas I feel like personally, I'm just where I need to be in the moment. I have my own issues I need to deal with in regards to work and things like that. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I either figure it out or I don't. You know what I mean? Like, I either do or don't. I think we also live in this society where, like, we have to know the answers to everything all the time, constantly. And I'm like, I don't really need to know it. Mm-hmm. I just, can I live with it? And is it make my, am I manageable? Is it manageable? Now, that's like the base, right? That's always my foundation. That's one thing I learned from the program, right? It, unmanageable is not a steady foundation to life. It's unmanageable. Mm-hmm. So to me, I'm like the base, lowest tier I can do if I'm not drinking is manage. I'm just managing, right? And then from there, you just start building up from just managing, you know? So as long as I'm just managing, eh, you know, it could absolutely get better, but at least I'm not mm-hmm. under that, you know? <clears throat> um, I heard something the other day and... I was thinking about it, um, and it was uh, somebody had said like, "I am weak and I need help," and like yeah. that can be like one of the most. It was just really powerful to listen to somebody else say it and to and to hear yeah. it, and I was like, "Holy shit, I am weak and I need help." And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. I, right. I'm, I am, I am powerless, and things are unmanageable. Right. right? That's mm-hmm. all. That's all it is. Yes. And yes, so, yes. yes. So. I don't know that there's there's going to be days where I'm weak and there's going to be days when I'm strong and and right. it doesn't necessarily have to be I have to be strong all the time and and or else I'm worthless. Right. So the man I I have I take such umbrage with people who who tell me well I don't abide by that school of thought of being powerless or man that's why I don't fuck with those programs because they tell you you're powerless and don't you have power? I mean, you make a choice not to drink every day. You have power. You have far more power than you think you do, you know? And it, it always fucking pisses me off because I'm like, but I am. You're powerless too. Like, you're not in charge of everything around you. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not in charge of cancer. 
you're not in charge of a drunk in another car who could just clip through the lane and yeah. end your life. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, you're not in charge of how your wife feels about you, or your family feels about you. That you're not in charge of anything really, except for maybe what's going on in your own head. And I doubt that either, because I'm not in charge sometimes of what's right? going on in my own head. You know. <laughs> So this idea of having complete power over everything, especially my alcoholism and my fucking recovery, it, it like I feel like that's just it's so much fucking ego, right? And the fact that it pisses me off means I have a resentment there, so I gotta sit down and like make a do my thing, right. you know? But but it does. It always has made me mad because it's always the people who tell me that aren't usually typically aren't alcoholics or are in active alcoholism at the moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And. And everybody's got to follow their own path in life. And like, if you're, you know, if you're talking to me and you're in active alcoholism, like, just don't talk to me while you're drunk and we're cool. Because I just can't. <laughs> After a while, I'll just walk away from you. Because drunk people repeat themselves. I was one for years. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, man. Just that idea just raises my fucking hackles. I'm like, dude, I am powerless, and it's okay. You know, I'm not saying I'm not even. I'm weak. I am weak and powerless. I'm not saying I'm less than. I'm saying that like I'm figuring it out. You know, you should. Figure it out. You'll be all right once you figure it out. And things change from day to day. And, you know, like maybe yeah. maybe you maybe it upsets you when somebody says that. But at least now you have the tools to recognize that 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 right. that's a resentment. And so you don't have well, to. Mm-hmm. And so in that even in that moment of recognizing that part of you is letting it go. Right. You know, so you're not like holding on to it. You still you, you're still holding on to it because it still bothers you. But a like a bit. Yeah. But, you know, you go, oh, man, that's a fucking resentment. So you kind of open the cage up to like let the bird out, even if you don't. Right. Even if you don't pull it out of the cage and throw it away, like you're just letting the mm-hmm. you're opening it yeah, up. I'm like you can go anytime you want to. <laughs> Walter's asleep on the couch. You can go out there anytime you want to and fly right. around him. You know? uh, yeah. yeah. So but uh, I think that that's I, a really positive yeah. thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, my, my wife says it to me all the time. She's like, look, you're recognizing that you're having an issue. You're recognizing why you're upset. You may not be able to remedy that in this moment, but the fact you see it, that's a big fucking step because mm-hmm. six years ago, you didn't see it. You were just always right and everybody else was fucking wrong. Right. You know? Yeah. So baby steps, right? That's that's the thing, man. Like we're just learning new neural pathways. Mm-hmm. That's what brings me. You know what it does? That's what brings me joy is knowing a knowing that i'm learning a new way of doing things makes me really fucking happy and b uh knowing that i am powerless because then i don't have to be in charge of everything fuck dude you know you know it's tiring to have to be in charge of everything Mm -hmm. god damn really i gotta fucking be in control of all this shit nah just by who out in the wind and i don't need to worry about you until you come back up again you know i mean yeah pay your rent you know, pay your bills, be in charge of that shit. But you know, those other things is, you know, what is, what is a uh, code say? Don't, don't, uh, don't sweat it if it's petty and don't pet it if it's don't sweaty. Don't pet it if it's sweaty. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things, man. At this day, I, just don't sweat it if it's petty, dude. Just out like the wind, mm-hmm. man. I, that's, that's yeah. his version of easy does it. I think. <laughs> I think so, man. We, I should get that embroidered and send it to him, dude. That would be funny. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think that that's, that's a good place to end it. I mean, that's that's yeah, that's the best way to don't sweat it if it's petty, don't pet it if it's sweaty. Right. Thanks again for listening. Our music, as always, is by Neglect. You can find more of his stuff at neglect.bandcamp.com. And you can find us on all social media platforms that matter: Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can reach us at a is for alcoholic at gmail.com. Talk to you later. Yeah.